The Lord be with you. And also with you. A blessed Holy Week to each and every one of you as we begin today the celebration of Holy Week with uh, Palm slash Passion Sunday. Uh, for those of you at home, welcome, and we invite you to download the order of service to join us in with the order of service, and that's found on the link right uh, near your picture there. Um, one announcement before we begin, or uh, are actually a twofold. First, obviously you can see that we have increased our size of attendance a bit uh, and went to every other pew, so uh, what a blessing it is to once again welcome more people into God's house to receive his precious gifts of life, salvation, and eternity. Um, also, uh, starting this morning for the Sacrament of Holy Communion, we will have the ushers ushering both sides up at the same time. We will still continue the processional communion in which uh, Pastor Billings will be on one side, I'll be on the other side, and we'll have uh, two elders with the individual cups. And um, so please take note of that. So with that in mind, let's begin by standing and joining with the greeting and the Palm Sunday College. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem with palms in their hands gathered to greet your dearly beloved Son when he came into his holy city, Grant that we may ever hail him as our king, and when he comes again, may go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John the Twelfth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughters of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. And the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us go forth in peace. In the name Amen. of the Lord.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament lesson is from the prophet Zechariah, the ninth chapter. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off. And he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double this is the word of the Lord. Christ entered once for all into the holy place by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised inheritance. He has redempted. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Our epistle is from Philippians, the second chapter. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. 
Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where, the, where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. Though he had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe in him so that the words spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what he heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe. For again Isaiah said, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, many even of the authorities believed in him, but for fear of the Pharisees they did not confess it, so that they would not be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for our hymn of the day, hymn number 438, A Lamb Goes Uncomplaining For.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for our meditation this morning, today's gospel from John 12. In the name of Jesus, amen. The events recorded in our text took place during the week leading up to Jesus' crucifixion. He had been loudly acclaimed as he entered Jerusalem on a donkey. Now he was in the temple. And some God-fearing Greeks wanted to have an audience with him. As it would have been considered a breach of etiquette to introduce themselves to him directly, they approached Philip. And Philip then went to Andrew and together they went to speak to Jesus. But when they told Jesus about these Greeks, how did he respond? You'd think he'd say, why, yes, of course, bring them here. But he didn't say that. And at first, it looks like he's not even going to respond to him at all. You know, he does that a lot. People come to him with questions, and he talks about something completely different. Which, on the surface, seems like he's not really answering the question. But, of course, he is. Uh, he just is answering it in his own way. We would all do well to let him answer in his way, because we'll always walk away with more than we bargained for. So how does Jesus respond to the request of these Greeks to visit with him? The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Well, that's interesting. John quotes Jesus on numerous occasions saying, My time has not yet come. My hour has not yet come. My time has not fully come. But now he says that his time has come. The hour has come for him to be glorified. Hmm. Glorified. Look, we know what happened later that week. And we can hardly say that that was glorifying to Jesus. Ah, but it was. And this request by the Greeks serves as a reminder to us, a sign that his hour has now come. So how's that? How is this simple question by these Greeks a sign that Jesus' hour has come? He says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Jesus is, of course, speaking of himself. He is the grain of wheat being killed on the cross. But what's the result? Much fruit. Through his death and resurrection, much fruit will be raised up. That fruit, by the way, is us. But how does a grain of wheat bear fruit? Through a kind of death and resurrection. Jesus says that a seed falls into the earth. It's buried. And its life to that point comes to an end. But new life emerges from the old, and a new plant grows and bears more fruit. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15 concerning our bodies and the resurrection from the dead. He says, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain, but God gives it a body as he has chosen. When we die, we're planted into the ground. And when God raises us from the dead, we'll be different. Our bodies will be new. 
What goes for the end of our life goes for the beginning of our life. And here I mean our spiritual life. Are you like those Greeks? Do you want to see Jesus? Then look to the planting of seeds. We see the beginning of a new spiritual life every time a baby is baptized. That child is in the waters of baptism planted, put to death, so that he might be raised again as a new young plant, a plant that needs to grow, to be nurtured with the living water of God's word, fertilized and cultivated. But what goes for the beginning of our spiritual life, our quest to see Jesus, also goes for the rest of our life. Jesus goes on to say, whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Do you love your life? In this world? Is your whole being wrapped around yourself? What you'll achieve? How you'll improve your earthly life? Then you'll lose it. On the other hand, do you hate your life in this world? In other words, are you willing to lose your life for Jesus' sake? Are you willing to put a higher priority on Christ than anything else in your life? Or listen to what Jesus says next. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. To serve Christ is to follow him. Now where is he going? He's going to the cross. Going to his death. And that's where his followers are headed. Beloved, do you want to see Jesus? then you have to follow him. Take his road, as he said, where I am, my servant will be also. And the honor that God gives to his son, he will give to those who follow him. Every religion in the world has a central symbol around which it revolves and from which its identity takes shape. For Christianity, that symbol is the cross. A heavy, wooden, splintery, stark cross. You can't avoid the cross if you want to deal with Christianity. And if you want to be a Christian, you can't avoid the cross for yourself. Was the cross unavoidable for Christ. Some have suggested that it was his fate to go to the cross. Well, we don't believe in fate. Fate is not a biblical, scriptural concept. None of the players in this drama, Pilate, Judas, the Sanhedrin, none of them were controlled by fate. They all made their own choices. Even Jesus made a choice. He didn't have to go to the cross. Listen to his words. My soul is now troubled. And what shall I say, Father, save me from this hour? My soul is troubled. That's that's a quote from Psalm 6. Psalm 6 is the cry of a sinner in repentance over his sin. But Jesus wasn't a sinner. So did he have to die? 
No. He was the very son of God. He didn't have to die. He didn't even have to come here. But he came. And dying was the purpose for his coming. Shall I say, Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose I have come to this hour. If we were ever to receive salvation, then yes, Jesus' death on the cross was necessary, but it was still his choice, which makes his death so dear and precious to us. It's in that context then that Jesus cried out, Father, glorify your name. Heavenly Father, don't save me from this hour, but use the hour of my death so that salvation might be given to your people. And then God the Father spoke from heaven, I have glorified it. I've glorified it through your life and ministry, and I will glorify it, uh, glorify it again through your death and resurrection. Of course, the crowd gathered there didn't quite understand what had happened. And Jesus explained to them that the voice was for their benefit. In fact, this was all for their benefit. Because now is the judgment of this world, he says. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. Christ's death meant the destruction of the fallen world and the casting out of Satan, the ruler of this fallen world. When I am lifted up from the earth, he says, I will draw all people to myself. By this, he's referring, of course, to the cross. Jesus was not glorified after his crucifixion as a sort of reward for what he did. No, the cross is his glory. His being crucified is his glorification. By the cross, he would draw all people to himself. And here finally is the answer to the Greeks. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And Jesus' answer is, yes, you will see me. Everyone will see me in all my glory. In a few days, my glory will be displayed on a cross for all the world to see. Glory in a cross? Ugh. Who wants to look for glory there? But the cross is where Christ's glory is. And it's where his glory will be forevermore. If you want to see Christ's glory, that's where you have to look. Do you want that glory for yourself? Do you want eternal life? They are not found where you might expect them. For your glory too is in the cross. Eternal life is found in hating your life in this world. It's bearing your cross for Christ. Nobody wants to suffer. Nobody wants the cross. We're afraid of it. But the cross is the reason Jesus came. And the cross is our reason for being. Jesus' life didn't end at the cross, of course. He rose again on the third day, victorious over sin, death, and the devil. He ascended into heaven and lives and reigns to all eternity. Neither will your life end in death, dear Christian. For Jesus will raise you up on the last day. His victory over sin, death, and hell will be your victory. 
And you will ascend through the clouds to meet him in the air. And you will reign with him in heaven forever and ever. That's where the glory of the cross led him. And it's where it will lead you to. Life forever in the glory of heaven. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. If you're able, please remain standing as we continue with the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Father, that you have sent your Son not in wrath, but in mercy. As we enter this most holy week and ponder together the mysteries of your great salvation, Show to us the answer to your people's prayers of Hosanna, save now, and the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Uphold this world in your order. Preserve the church and the preaching of your word against all enemies. Bless our homes, that parents and children may serve one another faithfully, and grow in instruction and faith until life's end. Give health and wisdom to all who serve in public office, that their authority may be exercised for the benefit of our people. Lord, in your mercy. We bring before you the sick, distressed, and needy, especially Pastor Michael Allemeyer, Jackie Kozlewski, Joyce Virtue. Pastor Tim Kinney, Michelle Mahoney, Jeff Dion, Sue Maynard, Donna Meese, Virgil and Judy Bender, Sally Bolin, Kathy Rigotti, Sylvia Schultz, Diane Olson, Frank Erdman, Blaine Henkel, Alan Monteufel, Debbie Monteufel, Judy Watkins, 
Shirley Fleischer, Dan Shale, Ann Keller, Jeannie Juvie, Walter Brinkman, Jerry Piotr, Roman and Flora Tarenko, Lana Gast, Scott Donchi, Sandy Romer, Scott Steenport, Norb Pomerenke, Brooke Schrader, Judy Krause, Lynn Olson, Mike Godwin, Rick Stanford, Mona Barkey, Scott Henriksen, Jason Seals, Lee Weinig, Mary Voigt, Karen Beard, Rose Kozlowski, Alice and James Thurber, Carrie Lindsner, Joan Reinke, Tom Drum, and Merle Weber. Give your abiding comfort in every circumstance that in Christ we shall not die but live and declare his works. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort all who mourn, O Lord, especially the family of Barbara Thomas, with the assurance of the resurrection for all who cling by faith to your Son, that they may not grieve as others do who have no hope. Lord, in your mercy. Bless those celebrating birthdays this week. Russ Borgert, Gabriel Melodic, Carlton Borgert, Borgert, Lee Colby, Heather Cleveland, Amanda Groshek, Jordan Wick, Linda Eckrick, Joan Oliet, Sandra Bangs, and Logan Wendler. And those with wedding anniversaries, Todd and Don Henriksen, and Mark and Sandy Guiley. Lord, in your mercy. Continue to bless the efforts of the Lutherans in Jewish evangelism ministry, O Lord, as they endeavor to reach out with the love of Christ to your original people. Lord, in your mercy. Look with favor on all communicants at your table. Grant that they would come penitently and in faith to eat your son's true body and drink his blood for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we here remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Praising his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, for he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again. And that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden, might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the one true faith, a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent forth your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and our minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated. Just one quick announcement. Uh, bear in mind the, the schedule for Holy Week this week. Uh, no service on Wednesday. Uh, Monday, Thursday, two services, 10.30 and 6.30. Good Friday, two services, uh, one of which is the three-hour service from noon to three. The evening service is uh, the service of Tenebrae at 6.30. Uh, Holy Saturday, uh, we're doing an Easter vigil at our usual Saturday time, five o'clock. And then the Easter Sunday, 6.30, 9 o'clock, and 10.30, all services with Holy Communion. Anything you want to add to that, sir? Very well. Let's sing our closing hymn, God's Blessings on Your Week.